Welcome to Latricia Creates. I am Latricia. In today's video, I'm going to unbox, set up, and hopefully press my first print using my new X-Tool screen printer. I'm really excited about this screen printer from X-Tool. A few months ago, they had a Kickstarter campaign and I signed up for it and got this thing and it came about a week ago. So now I'm ready to open it and see what it's all about. When I got this kit, they had several kits to choose from. I got the multicolor kit. Let's see what's in the box. There's this, there's some paperwork. There's this bar. Here's another part. I guess this is also part of the bar, I'm not sure. And then there's a box inside the box that, of course, is too heavy for me. So I need to get my husband to come and get this out of the box. And I'll be right back. The box is outside of the box. Now I'm going to cut this box and see what's inside of this box. Yeah, this thing sealed down tight. And what do you know? Another box inside the box. Let's see what's inside this box. Looks like some cardstock is inside of this box and these are the screens. I believe I got the one with 12 screens or yes I got the one with 12 screens so there are 12 screens here, cardstock, a little tote bag, a mat, let me move all this stuff. There's this wood board. And here's some ink. Yellow, glow in the dark, glitter gold, more yellow, and glitter silver. Here's a frame. I think I got the one that has four frames. So here's a frame. There is another frame. Here's a second frame. There's more ink. We have black, blue, and red ink. Two more frames. I got the one with four frames because I wanted to be able to do multi colors. The one with four frames was a little more expensive than the other one, but since it was a Kickstarter campaign, it was a pretty decent price. I know the Kickstarter campaign is over, but I think they still have a sale, but I don't know. And here is the press. I 
I'm going to just slide this press out and turn this around. So, we have these little, I guess these are the clips for the frames. And here's the press. Very well packaged. Very well packaged. And it comes with a very substantial manual. This is pretty cool because a lot of times when I get products, the manuals aren't that substantial. So that's a plus. Cardboard. And it comes with a squeegee and a little spatula. And that's everything that's in the box. So now I'm going to clean all of this stuff up and get ready to set it up. I got everything cleaned up, now I'm back. I figured out what these two pieces are for. They are for the actual laser. This one is for the S1. And this one is for the D1 Pro. I don't have either one, but I do have the original D1. So I'm going to see if this will work on my original D1. These things, they're called frame fixing pieces. And I guess they assist you with easily lining up the frame so that if you're doing multicolor printing, you can just do it with ease and good alignment. Now I'm ready to put the screen onto the frame. What I'm going to do is flip the frame over backwards, open up all of the pieces, and I'm going to put the screen, you see there's this blue side and on the back there is some cardboard. I'm going to put it with the cardboard side down and the blue side up, putting the cardboard inside the frame. Then what you want to do with these pieces, with this rounded piece, this is going to go inside here. They'd say to put it in at a 45 degree angle. Then you just press it down like that. I'm going to do the same thing for the other three sides. I think it's easier to help it along by pushing this in some. Now that all four pieces are in, it's time to flip it back over. Now I have to remove the cardboard. Might help if I had something to remove it with, but here we go. It was attached by double-sided tape. Now I want to close the sides back up. There's a bit of tension when doing this. Like this one is pretty hard. I think I'm going to need a little bit of help. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to flip it back over. You see? It's tight as a drum. 
Now it's ready to go to the laser to be engraved. I'm ready to put this frame fixing piece in. Basically, what needs to happen is the back leg needs to go into one of these and the front leg needs to go in the other. It actually goes like this on the left hand side. So this one is for the back leg. This is for the front leg. These two little pins, that's what the frame sits into. I'm just going to stick this in here. Lift it up. Put that leg in there. Lift it up in the front. Put this leg in here. All right, it's clicked in place. Now it's ready. Now I'm going to get the frame to put it in here. The frame, it has these two grooves. This one here and that one right there. Those two grooves are going to go into those pins. And hopefully it'll place nicely. There we go. It was so simple. Now I'm ready to get my design, go to the software, get it all uploaded and ready to engrave. I'm here in X2 Creative Space software. I went over here to the right hand side. I clicked on laser flat only to find out that screen printer is not available for my X2 D1. I have the original D1 10 watt and screen print is not available. So I called X2 to find out how come I didn't have this option. They told me I needed to update the firmware. I updated the firmware. The option still wasn't available. I contacted them again. They told me that it's not on the D1, but I can still use the D1. I also went down here to the user defined material only to find that coded screen was not there. I clicked on more, coded screen, still not there. I even went to the search, typed in coded screen, still not there, no content found. Then I went over here where it says supported only. I turned that off and there it is and it says not supported yet. So if you have an original X2 D1, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. So that's what I had to do. I had to try to figure it out for myself. I contacted X2 a third time and we were going back and forth. They were sending me different articles. They're telling me to set different parameters. I have to do some testing. So I started doing some testing using different settings. So I came up with a setting that I'm going to attempt to use after doing some testing. I had a bunch of test squares and I just kind of picked one that works for me. So it's pretty arbitrary. The one that I'm going to use is going to be a power of 65 and a speed of 90. So we're going to see if that actually works. I'm going to go over here to the left hand side, click on image. I'm going to bring my image in, which is this one right here. Click open. My image is 11 inches wide by 4.9 inches tall. I'm going to go back over here for the processing type. I'm going to change it to engrave. I'm going to change my power to 65. I'm going to leave my, no, I'm going to change my speed to 90. And I'm going to change this line per centimeters to 200. They did tell me to put that on 200. Since we're printing on the reverse side, this is going to have to be flipped. So I'm going to go up here to reflect and I'm going to reflect horizontally. Another thing I notice about not having the access to the screen printer is that 
the canvas remains the same where if you have access if you have like the d1 pro or the s1 the screen print frame comes up so it'll be easier to align it but i'm just going to go with this as it is this looks good i'm going to head back over to the x tool do some framing then I'll be ready to process it once I get it all framed out. So now I'm going to click framing. I'm ready to trace out my design. As you can see, this is where I did a bunch of tests and I decided to go with this one. I think some of the other ones were too deep, but we'll see. I haven't really tried it out yet, but now I'm gonna do the trace or the framing. I'm gonna press this button here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do it a second time because it says to do it twice. The framing is complete. I'm going to click right here. Then I'm going to go down here to process. Click on process. The preview looks good. Now I'm going to click on start. I'm going to head back over to the X tool, press the button, then we'll be ready to go. The design is all done. It doesn't look the way I expected it to. It doesn't look like my sample here. So I'm not really sure this is going to work out, but we're going to give it a try. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to be so mad because this is a lot of real estate. But I probably should have started with a smaller design, so it's my bad. Anyway. We're just going to roll with it. I'm back at the craft table. I'm ready to add the magnetic board to the screen printer. On the back of the magnetic board, there are these three slots that coordinate with these three places on the screen printer. All we have to do is put them in there and they will lock into place. Nope, that's not locked. There we go. Now it's nice and locked into place. There are these three positioning knobs on the front. Let me lift this up to show you. If you look here, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but it tells you the direction that these knobs go into. So this one here, this was the one that was on the bottom over here. It goes left and right. This is the one that was in the center. It goes up and down. This is the one that is on the top and it also goes left and right. Mine looks pretty good, so I'm not going to bother those. Also, it came with these stickers. These stickers are positioning stickers. So I guess if you're doing batch production and you want your material to go in the same place over and over again you put these stickers on there so that you have great alignment then we have this mat this mat is like a cricket mat it has small grids on one side and it has bigger grids on the other side i guess you use this depending on what type of material you're using and if the material slides around you can use this to keep it in place I'm going to go ahead and add this on here. The material that I'm going to use today, hopefully, is a pillow cover. But before I do the pillow cover, I'm going to test a piece of cardstock to see if this engrave even works. So let me go ahead and add this on there. 
it has the plastic cover on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on here for now until I'm ready to do my print. The next thing we want to do is add the screen on. So I'm going to slide this down so you can see how to add the screen on. In order to add the screen on, there's these two slots here. And we just stick the two slots into the place on here where it has those two little pins. Let's see. I can't really see it. Here, let me move over here. Now we can lock it in place by folding these levers in. Then you have this knob over here on the side. If you move the knob counterclockwise, it loosens it. If you move the knob clockwise, it tightens it. So you can press it down to where you want it. Then you can take the knob and tighten it. Now it's nice and tight. We can lift up the screen. Now it's ready to go. What I'm going to do now is grab my piece of cardstock, put it on here, see if this engraved even works. If it works, then I'll be ready to go ahead and put it on the pillow cover. I'm going to move this some more so you'll be able to see it. Put my piece of cardstock on here. I have this 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Okay, that looks good. By the way, this, this mat is 12 by 16, but I don't think you can do a 12 inch print going horizontally. I think it probably needs to be about 11 and a half or maybe even 11. There looks like a little half inch gap on each side. So I wouldn't do a 12 inch print. Now I'm going to open up this ink. This is black ink. It's one of the inks that came with it. It is 3.52 fluid ounces. And it says that it's for fabric, paper, and cardboard. I'm going to mix the ink up. Then I'll be ready to spray it on here. But let me tell you, I am not a screen printer. I do not have any screen printing skills. I have done the speedball screen printing with the vinyl, in which I think this is better than the vinyl. So I do have plenty of speedball ink that I'm also going to try. But according to Xtool, you can use any kind of ink. You can use water-based ink. And you can use oil-based inks as well. I think that's pretty good. Oh yeah, one of the other cool things that I didn't tell you is that this squeegee is also magnetic. And there's a piece on the front here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me lift it up again. This piece right here, the squeegee sticks to that. It also sticks to the back, so that's pretty cool. I'm just going to put some ink across here. I'm not going to put too terribly much. I think I better move my paper down just a little. Alright, now I'm going to take my squeegee and squeegee down and see what happens I know I shouldn't have pulled down so many times but the ink just wasn't covering the design the way I wanted it to so I just kept putting more and more ink on there not good all right let's see what happens
Nope. That is not good. Not good at all. Well, back to the drawing board to find new settings. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, keep creating. <music>